Hey everyone, Devin here with Backcountry Exposure. Could not be more excited to talk about the Iceco JP30 portable fridge that's great for car camping, overlanding, picnicking, whatever you want. This is awesome to keep food cold for the adventures that you're going on. And as I purchased a new vehicle this year, I knew that I was gonna be doing more car camping through the next uh, few seasons, and so I wanted something that was better than having to buy ice. Now, coolers, they're great. I have a Yeti that I love, but the issue with coolers is you have to purchase something big enough to hold all the food, plus the ice that the space uh, needs for keeping things cold. And with a fridge that runs off of AC or DC power like the JP30 does, you don't have to worry about that. And that's the biggest benefit of a fridge like this that has a compressor that you can put all of your food in, keeps it cold at a temperature consistently, whatever you set it to, and you don't ever have to worry about buying ice again. That is a huge benefit to having a unit like this. But what are the pros and cons of having a portable fridge like this? Many of you may be thinking that one of the upfront cons is how much a unit like this costs. Well, if you jump on Amazon, for example, you can find pretty inexpensive products out there in the two to $300 range. But the issue that you're gonna get with that is you are getting what you pay for. At a $500 or so price point for the JP30, which is a 32 quart or 31 liter capacity, it's a great value for what you get out of it. Now, something that I learned in my research on fridges is a lot of the price that you pay for a fridge is in the compressor. And this has a Dan Foss, which I didn't know what that meant prior to this. And you probably are thinking, I don't know what that means either, but it has a Dan Foss or a five year warranty on it. And what I understand is it's a very high quality compressor. So it's something that you can trust and rely on and it's going to work for a long period of time. Now in the few months that I've had the JP30, I've just been very impressed with how reliable and how consistent as I have noticed with the temperatures here on the readout, it stays within the temperature range that I am setting it to, as well as it's not using a massive amount of power to accomplish that. And that's what you, I know you're gonna get from the cheaper units. They're just gonna be less efficient, they're not going to cool as effectively, and they're not gonna be as well insulated. So Iceco, I feel like has hit the sweet spot between a cheap kind of just no name brand uh, Amazon product versus uh, your high-end Dometic products that you see a lot of people that are out overlanding using a lot. So Iceco, I think has really hit a sweet spot. So let's talk about more of the pros of this particular unit. Well, it's a perfect size for a small SUV. Now I have a Jeep Compass, it's a small SUV and it doesn't have a ton of storage space on the inside of the, of the car. So when I was looking at what can I get in the back of my car that is not going to sit horizontal and take up all of that space in the back, but I can run it from the seat back to the back hatch, what can I put in there? And the JP30 is perfect for that and not only the length at just about 23 to 24 inches with the handles on, but also the height, your 15 inches of height, and then you're just shy of 14 inches in uh, width on the unit. So it's a great size, not being too large, but big enough to be able to put a full weekend's worth of food in here. I've got about four days worth of food. I'm out on a car camping trip with my family right now, and four days of food fits perfect in here. And as we move things and eat and consume, I put more like sodas, for example, or uh, things that need to get cold in there, and it's great. The way that the temperature like setting and everything works is like super easy to, to use. It's plus or minus, you set your temperature, but you also have a max or an eco mode on here. So the max is going to put this into maximum cooling. It's gonna just run that compressor as hard as it can to cool the unit down to the temperature that you have it set at as fast as possible. That is going to use 
a lot more power at one time when you do that. So what I like to do when I'm using this is I'll plug it in at home and I will pre-cool the uh, fridge before I head out, before I put food in it. So I get it all nice and cold and then when I'm out, it's already running at its running temperature. The eco mode is going to consistently keep it at the temperature and use the lowest amount of power necessary to accomplish that. So let's talk about the power usage. Now there's plenty of videos out there that talk about with this unit plugged into this battery bank, this is the amount of wattage and this is how long it's going to last. I don't care about that as much in sharing in this video at least. There's plenty of videos that go into those technicalities. But I'll tell you that with this EcoFlow River Pro 700 watt hour battery generator, I get about 48 hours, 48 hours of direct uh, time of it plugged in and running roughly at about 30 to 32 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's plenty of cold to keep the things that I would have in here cold and it doesn't make it run over an excessive amount of time. Now something that I uh, really appreciate with Iceco is you get this like insulated cover. It's very lightly insulated, maybe an eighth inch uh, amount of foam around. But what this does is if you happen to uh, be in a spot where you've got more direct sun, that insulated cover is going to help protect the plastic from warping, uh, from getting overheated and too hot, but it also helps insulate and make it so it doesn't have to run as uh, hard because now everything is uh, getting heated up from the direct sun on the outside. But the benefit to this is I can plug this into my car, into the 12 volt uh, outlet in the back of my Jeep or in my other vehicle. It runs on that and it's not a problem at all. What this has is a three-stage battery protection. So you can set it for low, medium, or high. And if your battery, when you are running this, gets down to a certain level, this will recognize it and it will shut off so that you don't end up with battery issues depending on which of those uh, three settings you have it at. I normally just keep it right at medium, even though when I shut my car off, it turns off the power to the unit and that's when I plug it into here. When I've got it plugged into the EcoFlow here, it'll pull or draw about 30 to 50 watts at a time, depending if it's on the Eco or the Max and how hard it is trying to cool to get back down to that temperature that I have it set at. So it's really efficient and I've seen that consistently as I've used it over and over and over again for the past several months. So something that's important for me to show you is the fact that this actually holds a good amount of food in here. It's amazing how much space there is. You've got a, a cool divider right here in the middle that separates things uh, depending on what types of foods you have in here. You've got a lesser uh, like cold zone that uh, is good for like fruits or cheeses or things that don't need to be as cold like a bag of salad that if it was too cold down in the compressor you would actually start to uh, damage the lettuce and it wouldn't be as good but this has been in here for now day three and it looks great it's awesome can't can't complain about that so let's talk about the cons of using a portable fridge like this. Now the first thing that stands out is it's an electronic device. So there are failure points there. Things can wear out. It's not like a uh, static cooler that you put ice in that doesn't have any moving parts or anything like that or electronics that you have to worry about frying with your electric system or what you plug it into. Like that's a concern with electronic devices, but it's also just more to manage because in order for it to function, you've got to plug it into something. It's got to have power all the time. And that's the, the biggest downside. So when I'm out camping and it's not sitting in the car the entire time, got to have it plugged into my battery bank, which is not a problem, but the battery bank is only going to last for so long. So I've either got to have a way to charge the battery bank, which I use a 160 watt EcoFlow uh, solar panel. But even that, like right now, I'm in the shade and I would have to take the battery out into the sun with the length of a wire that I have to be able to plug it in, to be able to charge this, and then the fridge has got to be uh, attached to it somehow and plugged in. So there's a, there's a problem with that. And when I'm not necessarily in an overlanding situation where I'm driving the whole time, 
and then I may have a secondary battery system that this is able to run off of 24 hours, like all the time, then yeah, it's a little bit more to manage, a little bit more cumbersome. And if I'm gonna use this in like a picnic setting, then I gotta take this, I gotta take the uh, battery bank as well. And it's just more to carry with you. And then if you are in the dirt, you've gotta be concerned about the fan in here pulling dirt in and it getting dirty and causing a problem that way as well. So two other big things that kind of stand out to me about this as I've been using it is I wish that the door opened from this side and came up this way or the other direction and not necessarily this long side that makes it kind of like top heavy here because this door doesn't always like to stand up on its own. You can remove this little catch right here and have it like sit back a little bit further, but it doesn't always <laughs> stay open on its own. So it would be nice if it was not so top heavy and long that way because even against the backseat of my car, I can only get it open about this far. So if it was to open this way, then I would have less height and it may be a little bit easier to load in and out that way. And the other thing about this fridge is it would be nice if it was a dual zone. So I had a, a fridge section and a freezer section. So I had a little bit more uh, variability of options of food that I could bring with me. It'd be awesome to bring ice cream and to be able to keep that frozen and then have everything else in here or to be able to have little ice trays and I could make my own ice here in the fridge uh, freezer in that case. But having dual zone would be nice and they make dual zone fridges that you can get. This just doesn't happen to be one of those and that's okay. It does a great job otherwise. The other thing that would be nice that I know is available on other fridges is to have an app to be able to check to see what the temperature is at as I'm driving to make sure, yeah, that the unit is still on, that it hasn't turned off and it's gonna be another two hours before I stop and then I find out, oh, that the whole time it wasn't even uh, connected and running and cooling at that time and maybe I had spoiled food. But that has not been an issue for me whatsoever with this fridge. I just, I'm in love with it. I absolutely love everything that it has provided. I just love that I don't have to buy ice anymore. And it's convenient, it fits in my car. I can always have like cold drinks. If I go on a backpacking trip, for example, I plug this thing in over the weekend and then this is running and I've got like cold drinks back at the trailhead after a hot, just tiring uh, weekend in the in the desert or whatever and this is providing just an awesome awesome experience that way so the iceco jp30 also available in a 40 quart in a 50 quart this just happens to be the smallest size was the right option for me in my car and my setting my needs and everything i love it appreciate you guys watching today guys if you are not subscribed to the channel please do subscribe hope you have an awesome day catch you on the next one See you later.